Well, I gotta give credit where credit's due. I did not see this one coming. And first and foremost, before we go any further, kudos to you, Gearbox. What a great hotfix. I mean, really a fantastic hotfix. I love situations like this where I can sit here and just praise the developers rather than criticize them because I feel like a lot of people when they see these videos just think that Epic's here to criticize Gearbox or Epic does not want to give them any praise. But lo and behold, today's hotfix for Borderlands 3 is actually a hotfix for Borderlands 3 which fixes stuff it always bugged me that they called them hot fixes but then never actually did any fixes within them but today there is a lot in today's update for Borderlands 3, they are adding three weeks of an arms race mini event. The first one they say here, and keyword there, the first one is the Clear Skies event. During this event, all enemies will have a chance to drop better loot and the Murder King Circle will take longer to close in. Now, 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 now. We've got to talk about these events even further, because on week 2, Gearbox are going to be doing Extra Extra Extraction, which makes it so that during the Extra Extra Extraction, all extraction stations will have additional slots so you can get more gear out, and airdrops will have an increased chance to drop Dahl chests, which are more likely to contain arms race gear. For those curious, Dahl chests are just the big red chests that give you all the good stuff instead of the normal white ones. In week 3, Gear Rush. During the Gear Rush mini event, rare chests are more likely to appear in Arms Race and the green dial chests located at major points of interest in the Stormblind complex have an increased chance to contain Arms Race gear. However, the Murder Cane will also close in at a quicker pace. So before we go any further, I just want to say thank you. This is literally what we wanted from day one. And I do, have, I do have to say this, and I know you guys are going to hate me for this, but it is kind of a little bit too late for this. It would have been nicer to have it at launch, and I know there's already people groaning, ah, here's Epic complaining again, but you know, I'm just being honest, this is kind of too late, but it's still nice that it's here. For those of you out of the loop, when I did my final thoughts on Arms Race after my initial early access review, one of the things I wanted to see was limited timed events. And I'm really glad that at least now it seems we are going to be getting these and uh, uh, again I'm just gonna reiterate it is a little too late now we are what nearly three months down the line if you count all the early access and and now it's happening but hey we had the holiday period and uh, better late than never I, I guess I mean it's really good I don't want to take away from these changes they are good gearbox if you're watching you did good we'll shed some more light on them later but for now let's move on with the bug fixes it feels like this game has not had a bug fix update in years which is crazy because we're only about 15 months out from launch. But lo and behold, we've got a meaty list here and I'm not going to be flashing all of these fixes on screen. Just take my word for it. The link's in the description. So, so just let me read through them all and uh, yeah, get, get ready. It's going to be like listening to an audible.com story. Addressed a potential progression blocker created when the Xbox Series XS users would log into a map before the host and interact with mission objectives in multiplayer. Updated vehicle spawners to not activate while another player has started travel to another map. Added anointment support to the Link Legendary Pistol, finally, I don't know why that was ever not a thing. Adjusted the damage of thrown TDR weapons, of course this will carry over into Arms Race. Addressed a reported concern that the action skill end apply terror anointment was only applying one stack of terror. Updated the sirens infusion and forceful expression skills to work with the cryo element, finally, finally, finally. Updated the sirens ascendant skill to work with expedite. Updated the gunner's iron cup to receive actions skill damage boosts from class mods, adjusted the gunner skills desperate measures, stroke the embers and scorching RPMs to work with iron cub, finally, addressed a reported concern that the beastmaster's commandlet class mod was causing pets to behave strangely, adjusted the operative's devil raider skin's appearance on head customizations, addressed a reported concern that the hot spring grenade mod would continue to heal players after the AoE ended, players entering arms race will now start with full heal, skill points gained during arms race have been changed to update without the need for a save quit, updated the minimap to follow a party member's location while in spectator mode, made a change to the timer bar in arms race to correctly show the amount of time remaining during the kill the heavyweight harker objective, 
mission weapons will no longer stay in a player's inventory during arms race, addressed a reported concern that action skills would not properly unlock while in arms race when a level 1 character gained a level, addressed a reported concern on the Xbox Series X and S that a player's controller could continue vibrating through a loading screen in some instances, and again here the final one for the Xbox Series X and S addressed a reported concern that the controller would vibrate while loading into a map if using Iron Cub. But whoa, whoa, whoa that is not all because we've also got four gear adjustments and I like the way that it's called a gear adjustment that really sits well with me. Firstly, the Baby Maker has received a weapon damage buff and fire rate increase. Sledge's shotgun has had a weapon damage increase. Scorpio weapon damage increase and the Bearcat weapon damage increase there you go i'm not making it good in redux there you there you go there comes a time where i make these rant videos and i truly don't have many words whether that be for a good or a bad reason but i'm happy to announce that today that's for a good reason i don't know how i should break all of these things down or what i should say about them so instead i just want to generalize the whole hot fix by saying that this is what we needed You've heard me rant in the past about the lack of communication from Gearbox and how once again their silence is just quite frankly deafening. But when we receive hotfixes like this, I don't have any issues with there not being a little note at the end saying what's going to happen next because I have my faith restored in them. Which is why when I see a hotfix like this, I am just extremely overjoyed and filled with glee at the amount of passion that has went into this one. Now, of course, the typical Redditor response is going to be, Ah, well, Gearbox waited over two months to release this. But they still did it. And I think that's all that matters. You've got to remember, we did have the holiday period on us, and that could have brought some delays. But I'm just glad that we're getting a hot fix like this now rather than later. The only issue I have with this hot fix, however, is that it didn't include all of the changes from the previous one last Thursday. Now, is that a problem with this hot fix? No, that's a problem with the last one. And if you've already seen my run on that horrendous hot fix, it did not need to be one. There is no reason why they couldn't have just put them adjustments into this hot fix instead and just, I don't know, that did something different with that, that Guardian takedown event or maybe just activated the event on its own and left the weapon buffs for this one. I almost feel like with some of these hotfixes, Gearbox are padding them out and trying to spread them around so that they've got more hotfixes to show to the community rather than the communication to let the community know that, hey, a big healthy cupcake is coming your way. So in future, what I would like to see is Gearbox holding off on these kind of hotfixes, almost like they've done right now, but instead of releasing these little morsels of hotfixes, fixes here and there or, or even worse not saying anything have some communication with us and tell us that something like this is coming because a hot fix like this is fantastic and definitely makes me more cheerful about the game again the bug fixes to arms race absolutely fantastic i know a few twitch streamers that won't be whoring views from the directory now so that's great that they finally got all of them extraction glitches fixed that, that is fantastic news the fixes to amara's fourth skill tree fantastic. I know that people have been waiting a long time for stuff like that. So it's very nice. It's very heartwarming. It fills me with determination and it makes me proud of Gearbox when they release things like this. I don't know what I'm going to call this video now because usually it's a lot easier to call it something bad than something good. So I think we'll just give them props. Gearbox, you've done great. This hotfix is what we needed. The only negative side of this is that I wish it had been sooner. And I also just would have liked a bit more communication to know that something this big is coming. Because if I wasn't a Borderlands creator and I wasn't as enthusiastic about the game and your company as I am... I probably would have went elsewhere by now. But anyway, dudes, that's going to do it for my video today. Absolutely great news, and I, I really don't have anything bad to say about it other than what I said. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy these hotfixes. I hope the weapon damage increases and the link getting anointments now and Amara's trees kind of being fixed and then the bug fixes in arms race. I hope they make you happy. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day.